Hi there. As much as I try to optimize my paint processes, the single most time-consuming element to any paint scheme is highlighting. Well, when a friend interested me in the Horus Heresy game, I saw it as an opportunity to try techniques more common to historical modeling and minimize the amount of manual highlighting required to hopefully cut down on the amount of work. I enjoy the cybernetic horror design of the Mechanicum sculpts, but wanted to play up the anachronistic gothic themes a bit more. To that end, and to add some more visual elements, I added some homemade purity seals to this Thanatar battle automaton and a heraldic shield on the right shoulder. For the color scheme, I thought I'd do similar to my previous Admech conversions, but a little darker and less heroic. Without context and intent, let's get into painting. Because I know I'll be using dark colors and lots of metallics, I'll prime black rather than my usual gray. And while normally a strong advocate for airbrush priming, particularly for white, if you're priming in black, any cheap satin enamel paint will do. More importantly, the solvents in the enamel will bind better to the resin than the polyurethane used in airbrush primer, even though this technically doesn't say primer anywhere on the can. So, I spray it in a couple of very thin layers with just a few seconds of dry time in between, and I get a nice, smooth base coat to work from. So the first thing I look at is the general composition of the model, and for the most part it's armor plates attached to a pneumatic skeleton. So I figure it'll be easier to work from the inside out than the outside in, and thus I'll start with the metallics. I'll use Viejo Metal Color Silver, and airbrush a couple of thin layers all over the model to build up a solid coat. The metal color line produces a really convincing metallic texture and covers well even by brush, so I highly recommend it. For the armor plating, I choose Viejo Model Color Dark Gray and just start blocking in the armor. This is dark enough to contrast with the silver, enough that I often have commenters mistake it for matte black, but without being so dark that it can't be shaded further. So with that done, I now have a much clearer idea of the geometry of the model, where the armor starts and ends, and how much of the model is metallics. You'll notice the coverage isn't perfect after one coat, but that's fine. Right now I'm just sketching in the colors. You may also notice I've left one of the shoulders bare, which leads into the next step. I use Viejo Game Extra Opaque Heavy Red and paint in the left shoulder pad. To add a small counterpoint to the other side of the model, I do the heraldic shield in red as well. Next I'll actually use black and paint in all the hoses that detail the model. This takes a little while, but mistakes can always be corrected later, so I don't worry too much about perfect accuracy. This has now defined all the main materials of the model. Gray for the armor with red accents, silver for the metallics, and black for the hoses. There are minor details like the skulls, purity seals, lenses, and plasma coils that I know will get their own colors later, but for now this basic composition allows me to think about where I want to place an accent metallic to break up all this endless silver. For that, I'm using Viejo Metal Color Gold, and I'm going to apply it to just the areas of highest importance. That means a faceplate, the Mechanicum sigil on the chest, the engine, the brass casings in the ammunition hopper, some minor details on the plasma mortar, and the apparent cooling fins on the bolt cannons. This breaks up the silver while drawing attention to the weapons and upper torso. Now I'll use VMC Neutral Gray and use it to dry brush all the hoses and pipes that I picked out in black earlier. I'm doing this now just because dry brushing is a messy process, so I can fix any mistakes now while it's all flat colors. Before I go any further, I'm now going to go back and clean up all the colors I've used so far, because in the next step I'm going to start applying washes. Alright, so the first wash, Army Painter Dark Tone. I apply this to all the metallics, both silver and gold. I'm deliberately going a little bit into the gray so that I can shade the transition between colors, again, not hard to clean up later. You might wonder why I bothered cleaning up the gray if I'm just messing it up again, but I'll get to that in a moment. Once a dark tone dries, you can really see it makes a big difference on the metallics. I'm not going to do any further highlighting or shading for now, I'm going to leave it alone and move on to the armor. So one of the best ways to add to the realism of a piece is transfers, so let's get into that. The first thing I do in adding any transfer is to apply gloss varnish to each transfer site. This will prevent it from taking on a frosted look, which is caused by trapping air in a matte surface. Any acrylic gloss varnish will work. I'm using Pledge Floor Gloss, which is not intended as a hobby product, but does the job quite well. Once that first layer dries, I apply a second and let it dry. Now the fun part. I soak the transfer in water while simultaneously brushing some clean water onto the transfer site. Then I can slide the transfer off its backing with a brush and... struggle it into position. Well, normally it's pretty easy, but this transfer is over an inch across, so it doesn't want to move easily. Once it's in place, I press down on any wrinkles, and normally they flatten out. But uh, you may have noticed that this transfer was applied over rivets and a panel line, so it doesn't want to sit flat. Time for Microsol. This is a mildly acidic solution that dissolves the transfer, allowing it to settle more naturally into the surface. I dab a bit on and gently press while it does its thing. After one application, it's not quite perfect, so I do a bit more and let it sit. 
Any minor wrinkles visible while it's wet will disappear as the microcell dries. The important thing is that the transfer follows the contours of the model underneath. All the other transfers go on flat without needing the microsol and have come out great. But thanks to my overzealous application on the main cog, the microsols etched the paint a bit and marred it. Fortunately, since I haven't done anything but a base coat so far, this is real easy to clean up. I just go around the periphery with red. It's okay if I accidentally cover bits of the transfer since I'll be weathering it later anyways. I do the same for the other transfers, covering up the gloss varnish and making sure to paint over the transition between the transfer and the paint underneath. Sealing in the edges of the transfer this way gives it that seamless, painted on look. And since I have it out, I'll also use the dark grey to clean up the washes I applied to the metallics earlier. Alright, now back to neutral grey. I'm going to apply exactly one layer of edge highlighting to the armor. Because the armor is composed of mostly flat or rounded plates with hard geometric angles, edge highlighting them is easy. I'm using a Da Vinci Maestro size 2 Kalinsky Sable brush, with just a bit of paint in the tip and gently running the tip along the edges and picking out rivets. I've also diluted the paint with Viejo Glaze Medium rather than water, which will drastically extend the drying time and prevent my brush from drying out as I go. Once again, I work quickly since mistakes can still be fixed without much effort. I find the time I save more than makes up for the cleanup needed later. Now I switch to VMC Scarlet and do exactly the same for the red. Since Scarlet doesn't cover nearly as well, this requires two passes to get solid color. And once I clean up both colors, here we are. It's tedious and time consuming to pick out all those rivets and edges, and it may not make a ton of difference now, but once I start adding shading it'll start to really pop, and I'm not going to need to do any further layers. And on to weathering. Here's a piece of foam sponge torn into a rounded shape. I dip this in my heavy red, blot some of it off, and gently dab it onto the transfer to give the impression that the white paint is chipped off. I then do the same for the other transfers using my dark grey again. It takes some practice to get a feel for how much paint to have on the sponge and how hard to apply it. Try it out on a piece of sprue or even just your palette. And now the real weathering. So first, a bit of theory. In real life, most vehicles have primer on top of the bare metal and then the final top coat paint on top of the primer. This means that light mix may not pierce the top coat, deeper scratches expose the primer underneath, and deep gouges expose the bare metal. You can play around with this layering to get some really impressive effects, but for this model I'm asserting that it really is just bare metal under the paint. Chipping down to bare metal will help tie the armor plating into the silver metallics used on the skeleton, making it look like the paint applied to the armor plating is just an aesthetic layer over the robot's metallic frame. So I apply the silver with my sponge, with deeper chipping to represent battle damage on edges and raised surfaces, with softer chipping elsewhere to suggest degradation due to exposure to weather. As always, I can clean this up if anything looks too artificial. Here's the whole model chipped, and already it's starting to look appropriately worn. But it still lacks shading, so time to address that. I mix Army Painter Dark Tone 1 to 1 with water, and apply that to all the red and grey armor plates. This is a thin mix that will run easily, but it will help to define the strongest shadows and provide a subtle modeling effect across the flat surfaces. Now even with that step, the shading isn't as strong as it could be, but I'll be addressing that soon. Before that, though, it's time for the remaining details. With VMC Ivory, I block in all the parchment and skulls, which takes a couple of layers because the coverage is awful. Next time I'll start with a strong khaki, and then move up to Ivory. Anyways, I then use VMC Red to paint the wax seals, and then Vermilion to do a quick highlight. These reds are a bit more vibrant than the ones used on the armor, which helps convey that they're a different material while still retaining a similar tone. This way I can add some small spots of red to the model to help tie in with the shoulders, but without having them look unrealistically identical. Now I do some freehand with the same good brush I used for edge highlighting, with just a bit of black thinned with glaze medium on the tip, and this is pretty bad. You can see I managed much finer lines on the other purity seals simply by having less paint on the brush. So I redid the first scroll, and think it came out much better the second time around. You don't need a tiny brush, just one with a fine tip, and a bit of glaze medium or drying retarder in your paint to stop it from drying out on the brush. With the writing done, now I can use soft tone to wash the parchment and skulls, making sure to soak up any excess pooling on the parchment. At this point, the only thing that I feel really needs further work is the gold. It's just too flat and boring, even with the shading earlier. Because this isn't a rich gold, more of a brass, I'm going to apply some verdigris. To do this, I take VMC Green Sky, dilute it one part paint to three parts water, and randomly blot it onto the flatter surfaces of the brass. For the more detailed or smaller areas, I can just apply it as a wash. So here's the result with the gold, or now brass, looking significantly more weather-beaten. 
I deliberately left it off the bolt shells in the hopper, since ammunition in active use won't accrue the same sort of weathering as the parts of a centuries-old robot exposed to the elements. Now the last major step is an oil wash to pull it all together. We'll be using a mix of charcoal grain burnt umber oil paint, both from Windsor and Newton. To start, I squeeze equal parts of each color into a glass jar, pour in some odorless mineral spirits, and start mixing. Please be aware that odorless is relative to brain-melting turpentine, and this stuff reeks pretty bad. Do this outside or at least near an open window. Once it's mixed thoroughly, I use my dedicated oil paintbrush to dab a bit onto a paper towel. It just leaves a dot of strong color, so I'll add more mineral spirits, mix it up, and try again. Now when I apply it, I get a dot of strong color in the middle that fades to a gentler tone on the periphery. It's a bit browner than I'd like, so I'll add more charcoal gray and then more mineral spirits, but this is the general consistency I shoot for when washing dark colors. When I'm done with this, I have a jar of the stuff that I can use on future models with no mixing needed. Two notes here before I continue. First, if you use Windsor & Newton, be sure to get the Artist Color line and not the cheaper Winton line. I used the Winton at first and found that the coarser pigments produced a grainy finish in the wash that made it harder to work with. Second, gloss varnish your model before applying the wash. While the wash generally won't eat into acrylic paint, it may react badly with the transfers, and gloss varnish provides a uniform surface that will help the wash to flow consistently. So, I slapped the wash all over the model, not worrying much about pooling. It dries quickly, and then the model looks very dirty, almost like it's been covered in mud. But this is where the magic of oil washes comes into play. I dip a cotton bud in mineral spirits, dab it onto a paper towel to remove excess, and gently swipe it across the model. The cotton bud picks up and removes the wash where it touches, allowing me to clean it off the model. I could do this very aggressively and leave the wash only in the deep recesses, but because I want the model to look a bit dirty, I take a lighter touch, just cleaning it off of raised areas and redirecting it as necessary. With that done, the model has a lot more depth. I wash my brush out in mineral spirits, not water, and then give the model a day for the oil paint to cure, accelerating the process with a food dehydrator set to 50 degrees Celsius. After that, I seal it with another layer of gloss varnish, and that locks in the oils. Now it's down to the last details, so for the glowing lenses and plasma coils, I use my normal recipes, which I covered in another video. I'll put a link in the description. I've gone with a muddy trench theme for the basing, so I want to tie that into the model. For this, I take my lightest dry brush color for the base, representing dried mud, and stipple it onto the feet and shins. That gives an easy dried mud effect, and then all that's left is finishing the base and varnishing. Here's the outcome. A suitably grimdark... Games Workshop Horus Heresy Forge World Mechanicum Legio Cybernetica Thanatar Class Battle Automaton Trademark Copyright Big Robot with a Gun Using a mixture of acrylic and oil washes and heavy use of transfers and weathering, I think I was able to get a pretty nice result for very little real effort, and it goes great with the rest of its growing pile of friends. Well, I hope you found this video helpful. Feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions. And as always, thanks for watching.